Okay, my name is Jordan Osborne. I'm at Cresswell High School. And uh, my IIP project was uh, how to properly use citations proficiently in your writing. And uh, we thought this was an important tool for our students to be able to uh, gain. And so that's why we went with this. A couple other reasons why this project. Last year I had a school improvement project that was uh, writing as well. And one of the things that it left off was using citations properly. Um, the students showed good growth in the actual uh, in the school improvement project in their argumentative writing, but one of the things that we left out was, was uh, using citations. And then lastly, as we make this push for college and career readiness, one of the major things that kids need to be able to do is write effectively. In order to write effectively, you're also going to have to be able to read, analyze, interpret, um, and solve problems. And when you're doing that with other people's work, you need to be able to cite that information. So I felt like while the focus was on citations, the kids were also getting a lot of valuable um, practice and other, other things and other areas that, that were important for college and career ready. Last year's school improvement project focused on statement of purpose, organization, and elaboration of evidence. The elaboration of evidence piece is a we're building on because they were asked to use other people's arguments and other people's evidence, but they weren't asked to cite it within the um, within the text and so or at, or out of text. So we we decided that this was going to be our push. You can see here there was some pretty good growth, 66% uh, for statement of purpose at the start. We ended up with 75% of students being able to master that or at least get to proficient, which is three on the Smarter Balance scoring rubric. Organization didn't really move much from 61 to 62 percent, and then elaboration of evidence went from 42 percent to 59 percent. So only 59 percent of our students were elaborating on evidence that they were given in their own writing. We wanted to improve that, and we wanted to cite properly within the text and out of text. So my SMART goal uh, went with 100 percent of students will be able to proficiently use citations correctly when writing essays as scored by the Smarter Balance Scoring Writing Rubric by the end of spring 2015. So I thought that, um, I thought we needed to go for 100%. And um, I, I was going to be okay if we, if we fell a little bit short, but we have a duty to our students to uh, educate 100% of them. And I didn't feel like a, an 80% or a 90% um, goal was trying to get everybody and so it's important to me and when I become an administrator um, that we try to reach everybody and the goal should be a hundred percent the Smarter Balance Scoring Writing Rubric is a one through four um, one and two do not meet three meets or is proficient and four exceeds um, so we were looking for a three or higher on that baseline data was was pretty interesting you can see here that 83% of our freshmen, we, we tested 80 freshmen, 83% of those scored below a 3. So the vast majority of our freshmen uh, were, could not use this technique properly. And then we tested 92 sophomores that, that were in our group here, and 83% of them also scored below a 3. So they couldn't effectively use the citations either. And then lastly, the other group was seniors, and 75% uh, of seniors could not proficiently use in and out of text citations. We're looking for MLA format, which is pretty much the most basic um, form of, of citations in papers. And when, when we went to college, um, or a lot of us went to college, that was the basic one they wanted us to know. And then we were able to adapt after that, depending on what discipline we were in. So the baseline data was pretty ugly, but that gives us good, good room for growth. It's going to enable us to uh, work with these students and hopefully show some growth, as you'll see later on. So for formative assessments, we did a variety of different things. Uh, when we first started the class discussions about why, hey, why is this important, um, here's what this looks like. We did a lot of modeling, and as we were doing that, we were able to do um, you know, easy check-ins, fist to five. You know, how are we feeling on citations? Um, and we're able to get a real easy, easy uh, look at 
you know, hey, I'm at a three, so I kind of get it. I'm at a four, I'm at a five. I, I could teach this to the class if I'm at a five. And most of our students early on were at about a two or a three. Um, as we moved forward in the process, they were able to get over to fours and fives. So that was good to, uh, for our, our teachers to be able to monitor. We also did a lot of short paragraph responses, sort of similar to, to what, what you might consider an exit slip. Um, you know, a, a short paragraph with the work cited in text and also the written out bibliography piece as well. We, we try to do a lot of that, a lot of practice, 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 practice um, as, as we move forward. And then we did longer paragraph responses or people call them essays, whatever you'd like to call them. And we use these, this data in our longer paragraph responses to gather interim data during the process. And um, so we kind of, we monitored, we monitored, then we, te we, we tested with the interim longer essays, we adjusted, and then moved forward from there. So that was our base, basic uh, formative assessments. So adjustments that we made along the way were, were uh, pretty simple, uh, but also uh, important for us. We, after the first interim data, we went with a peer editing technique that one of our teachers had that she had used in the past and that was pretty successful where the, where the students would write and then they would peer edit each other um, hey have you cited this properly uh, how's your out of text your bibliography look um, hey should you have this information cited so we were able to clean up a lot of simple things at that point which was quite nice um, and then we had some issues with students getting engaged in some of the curriculum that we were we were teaching and the, the, the classes range from English to history economics um, and then some just some basic um, some basic elective classes like business um, and so some of that stuff the kids weren't interested in so what we decided to do was use a technique um, where they had to find arguments and then debate the arguments be able to use the evidence from the arguments debate, 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 and then they would use that evidence in their writing. And this helped the students read and understand the readings a little bit better. It helped them understand um, the arguments a little bit better, and it helped them get more engaged because one of the problems we were having is the students weren't becoming engaged, and this was a pretty good technique for us as, as we move forward. And then lastly, you know, there was a couple of teachers, one in particular, that, that did, wasn't doing enough practice. And his students were having some slow growth. And so we just reminded him, hey, you got to practice, practice, practice. One of our mantras at Crestwell High School is reading and writing in every class every day. And so I reminded him of that. And he started to, to continue to uh, offer more chances for the students, not only with writing citations, but it's a sound policy, reading and writing every day for college and career ready students. And so those were important adjustments that we made along the way. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to show you here the interim improvements, and you'll see that there was some slow growth made, um, and towards the end, the growth sped up as more students became um, more comfortable with the, with the information uh, and the technique that we were teaching. So this is uh, our first formative assessment. You can see that we had 80 freshmen, 92 sophomores, 68 seniors. Pretty much the whole time, we're able to test these same kids, which was nice and work with them. And you can see here, 60 of the 80 freshmen in the beginning did not meet the standard. And that comes out to 75% of students that uh, couldn't do the standard. The sophomores were about the same. They came in at 73% on the first interim check. And, and then the seniors were the, did the best, which you would expect, because hopefully they've been um, shown this before. But only uh, Fifty-eight percent actually couldn't couldn't use the technique properly on the first interim assessment. This was done a couple of weeks after the baseline data, so they had had a little bit of practice using using this information. Uh, this formative assessment interim check number two was done about a month or so, maybe a little more after the first one, and you you can see the numbers are way better. Uh, 42% still couldn't master it or couldn't at least get a three. 44% uh, of sophomores and the seniors uh, had about 70% of students 
that we're able to use it effectively. Um, so in this second data check, more students could do it than couldn't, which was a good thing to see. We're seeing real growth. This is when we started doing, in between these two is when we really started doing the peer editing um, and the argumentative talk stuff that really helped. And we continue with those, and you'll see here on our last interim check that the amount of students that cannot use the uh, use citations effectively was even lower than this one, which was nice. So at this point, 75% of seniors could use citations effectively in and out of text. The sophomore class was the one that struggled the most for whatever reason. I'll talk about that a little bit later. And then the, uh, the freshmen were down to 37% to, uh, of students not being able to use it effectively. So you can see the, the, the growth was dramatic from the 80s, not being able to do it, down to the 30s for our interim, interim check. So that was nice. Right now, the only data that I have is seniors on summative assessments. And um, you'll see here that 19% of, of the students were not able to effectively use citations. And so 81% were, were able to. And so our number with the seniors, if you remember, was 75% that were not able to use it. And by the end, 81 could use it. And that, that's a great growth number for us. Uh, the thing that was frustrating about these 13 that did, didn't make it is, is a lot of them didn't attempt to do it, even though it was required in the assignment. They talked about it, they practiced and practiced, and that was one of the struggles, and I'll talk about that in a little bit too, that it was just difficult to get some of these kids to even attempt it, and um, our teachers worked hard to, to try to make it happen. I would say that I did fall short on my SMART goal. I wanted 100% of students. The seniors, I only got 81%. So um, that's a good number for us. But at Crestwell High School, we want to we want to reach everybody. And so we're not going to stop. Uh, we're not going to feel great about 81%. Did we make strides? Absolutely. But we want to be able to reach all of those kids. And these 13 seniors that weren't able to do it, we're going to still work with those kids before they get out of here. And hopefully they'll be able to master the... Uh, um, master the ability to use in-text and out-of-text citations. So my, my successes, I think that, as you can see, we, we showed great growth, really great growth. I mean, we went from 80% not being able to do it to 80% being able to do it. I'm still waiting for that data from the, from the sophomores and freshmen, but I'm, I'm hopeful that they're going to improve um, in, around that area somewhere. Probably not quite as good as the, the seniors, but, but you never know. Um, we did reading and writing all, all the time in our classes, and, and, and that, that's a real success for us. We're moving away from, uh, you know, reading the book and answering questions one, two, three, and we're moving more into engaging material, short articles, um, and, and they, they read and they wrote and they did a lot of it, and I saw a lot of improvement in other areas with the students, not just the area of using citation. So it was an overall success. And because of that, I think our students are more college and career ready today than they were in September when we, when we started working on this project. And so I'm pretty proud of that. And our younger kids are going to have a great opportunity to, to continue to master these skills. And by the time they're going off to be college and career ready, um, I think that they're going to be in excellent shape um, in terms of reading and writing. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Some challenges, I, I had several challenges that made it difficult, uh, but you know, administrators' jobs are difficult, and um, so this is a great great thing for, for all of us to deal with, is this, is this working with difficult staff. So I would love, I wanted this to be a whole school project. I wanted it to be all of our teachers, and um, it just didn't work out. There were some issues with a few teachers that I had originally planned being on the team. They brought some negative energy. And because, um, because I guess I didn't have to deal with them, if I was a school administrator, I probably would have done this as a whole entire um, unit of teachers. But I whittled it down to three teachers, and I was able to work with those guys uh, and gals directly. They were great to work with. And once I got it down to those, those folks, we were able to do some really good work with our kids. The other thing that was a struggle was uh, giving teachers freedom, but also direction. 
And I, I have tried to balance these two things, and I think any administrator probably struggles with this as well. I want my teachers to be able to be free. I want them to be able to have choice. I want them to be creative. I don't want to stifle that. But I also need to be able to give them some direction on where they need to go while still being creative and, and those things. So once I got that balance down, uh, it, it, the project went really well. And the teachers actually commented to me many times how they appreciated trusting them or they appreciated that I was allowing them to be creative. And so, and so that was neat. I was excited. Um, but in the, in the beginning, it was a little bit of a struggle. The other challenges that we faced were, uh, you know, these kids haven't been subjected to this type of learning, and that, that's, a, that's a, an issue, I think, maybe overall in education. And some of them struggle reading, and some of them struggle writing, and they had never been um, asked to do this type of work, especially the older kids. It was quite frustrating that, that a majority of them have never written a paper with a citation in it. I thought that was pretty upsetting. and. Um, the younger kids, they also had never really done it, had been exposed to it, so that was a challenge. But um, they were they were good. The, the students were great. Most of them bought in. Uh, but the other issue is the no attempts, and uh, it was frustrating because maybe there was 10% of the kids that didn't even attempt in any given time to uh, use citations or to use evidence from somebody else, and they would write an argumentative paper. Um, arguing their opinion and not bringing anyone else in, even though they had a five or six articles with differing opinions that they were given by the teacher um, to be able to scaffold their arguments. And so that was frustrating for us. We tried to do the argumentative talk stuff to help that. It did help, but it was still frustrating um, in some aspects because, uh, you know, we couldn't get them all to buy in, and that, and that was frustrating. So the impact on student achievement was, was great. The growth rate was awesome. I felt like we really made headway. If you look back at the uh, baseline data, or even if you look back at last year's school improvement project, um, the students grew a ton in this aspect. And it was great to see the seniors, for example, they went from 75% of students not meeting the standard to 81% meeting it. I mean, not much more to say than that. I'm real proud of the growth that we had. I was really proud of the teachers and the students that, that worked with me on this project. And I think it had a great impact on, on our student achievement in college and career readiness. Thank you.